So I wanted to come on here and talk about something that's been bugging me for two years now, and that's Bill Belichick and this stupid narrative of Brady was the reason as to why he won all his championships. Bill had Brady, right? You know, this, this stupid narrative of if a team wins, it's because of the quarterback. If a team loses, it's because of the quarterback. So in 2020, Bill, Bill, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and went on to win a Super Bowl. Now, I'm sure that a lot of people doubted Tom Brady because there was that narrative that was still floating up in the air that Bill Belichick's system is the reason as to why Tom Brady has so much success in New England. I never bought into that narrative. I never bought into that it's Bill Belichick and that's why Tom Brady's so great. They're both great. They both needed each other to be successful. So I didn't buy into that. After Brady wins his seventh title and competes in his 10th Super Bowl, I hear people trashing Bill, saying that Tom Brady was the system, Bill should be embarrassed, and yada yada yada. And the narrative is still out there today. After the Bills destroyed New England in that playoff game, I see these idiots on social media tweeting out these memes and making fun of Bill, saying that Brady was the reason as to why he won all those championships and Bill Belichick's record with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick's record without Tom Brady, which I freaking hate. I fucking hate that. These, these stupid quarterback records are so stupid. But anyway, going back to the year where Tom won his Super Bowl, his seventh title, Bill really didn't have much to work with. So let's compare the teams, okay? Bill had Cam Newton. So right there, you know that's going to be a problem, okay? That's going to be an issue for the Patriots to score points against teams because Cam Newton has never been a potent passer. He's never really been a guy that can light up defenses with his arm and beat coverages with his quarterback play by standing in the pocket and delivering accurate passes on time. I've seen this dude overthrow wide open receivers for touchdowns. At times, wide receivers who are wide open have to make these acrobatic, ridiculous catches rather than put the ball in the chest or the stomach of the wide receiver. So you had Cam Newton who only threw for what? 2,000 yards, had like eight touchdown passes and 10 interceptions, and got benched like two times. Then New England gets rid of Cam, so that failed. Goes back to Carolina, and then he's like, I'm back, and I'm back, and nothing really changed. Okay, so you had Cam. You had a defense that wasn't very good, particularly in the run department. I thought they got manhandled up front. I, I didn't think New England's run defense was very good. And the wide receivers weren't very good at all. Never really had a number one target for Cam to throw to. And that was the year when COVID was taking over the world. New England's roster was affected by COVID. So not only do you have a incompetent quarterback, you have a defense that's struggling, that's not very good, wide receivers who can't really get open. Bill, I'm sure Bill looked at the offense in particular and said to himself, okay, let's, let's play to Cam's strength. Let's go one dimensional. So they went run heavy, running the ball, trying to establish a running game, play actions, bootlegs, stuff like that, right? It's hard to win in the NFL if you're one dimensional like that. Ask the Falcons and Marcus Mariota. Sorry, Mary Gota. So it's hard to win like that. So now well, let's shift to Tampa Bay, the team that Tom Brady got to work with. Tom Brady had Gronk, still had Gronk. Antonio, I'm still a straight up bitch, Brown. Mike Evans was still there. Leonard Fournette, who played a lot better than I thought he would. Then on the defensive side of the ball, Shaq Barrett, Carlton Davis, Antoine Winfield Jr., Levante David, Jamal Dean, Devin White, you know. So this Buccaneers team was loaded from top to bottom. And they held the Kansas City Chiefs, who, by the way, just scored 38 points in the Super Bowl that they just won, to nine points. To nine freaking points. Now you can say the offensive line for the Chiefs wasn't very good, and, and um, you know, you can definitely say that, but still, you held the Kansas City Chiefs to nine points points. He took away Patrick Mahomes' two favorite weapons in that game. So of course, Tom Brady was going to have a better chance at winning another title than Bill. So if you take that Tampa Bay championship roster, swap them out with the New England Patriot roster, give Bill a competent quarterback, doesn't have to be an Aaron Rodgers or Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, just someone who's decent, who's good enough because we've seen decent and average quarterbacks win championships. Give him someone who can throw the football. Then you give Tom Brady that Patriot roster to work with. Who do you think has a better chance of winning a title? Pretty sure Bill does. And then that year when they got destroyed by Buffalo, you gave Bill some competent players to work with and they made it to the playoffs. <laughs> it's a team sport. It's a team sport. Well, Bill had Brady. Oh, oh, really? So it wasn't because of Ty Law, Richard Seymour, Teddy Bruschi, Willie McGinnis, Mike Brabel, Randy Moss, Deion Branch, Rob Gronkowski, Corey Dillon, those great offensive lines, Asante Samuel, who just found out, came out, said that um, Bill's an average 
coach, but you won two championships with that average coach. So I would shut the fuck up and be grateful. So none of those guys or played a factor in helping Bill Belichick win those championships and giving him an opportunity to win championships. All those great players that played for that franchise, Rodney Harrison, <laughs> they didn't do anything. It was all Brady. Makes sense. Okay. They didn't give Bill a chance to win championships. Once again, that was all Brady. None of those guys. Ty Law. Did I say Ty Law? Well, if I didn't, there you go. Ty Law. There's another one. <laughs> so I hate this narrative of if a team wins, it's because of the quarterback. It sounds so dumb. It gets debunked time and time again when you see games being played out. Okay. I'm not a head coach, but I like to think that it's more than just standing on the sideline and calling plays. Pretty sure there's a lot that goes into being a head coach of a professional football team. Pretty sure. So Bill didn't have anything to do with finding those players and getting them to come to New England. Bill didn't have anything to do with creating a game plan that better suit suited his team. He didn't have any say. All Brady, all Brady once again, right? Well, Bill had Tom Brady. <laughs> Look. I'm not trying to come on here and, and, and say that Tom Brady didn't play a hand in any of those championships. Of course he did. He's the freaking quarterback. And he's one of the best to ever do it. A lot of people considered him to be the GOAT. I think. I don't know. It seems like people are looking at Patrick Mahomes now as the GOAT. But to me, neither one of them are the GOAT. But they are great players. Okay? And I think Patrick Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the NFL. But he's not the GOAT. To me, he's not. But don't say that it was all Brady. Because to me, that's a slap in the face to every player, every great player that played for the Patriots and helped them become a dynasty. Oh, and by the way, Bill has eight rings. Okay? He has eight rings. He won his first two championships as a defensive coordinator for the New York Giants in 1987 and 1991. So stop disrespecting Bill Belichick. So I just wanted to come on here and rant about this because it's been bothering me for a long time. And I never thought that I would be making a, a video defending Bill Belichick of all people, so especially since I'm a Falcons fan. Isn't that hilarious? Whatever happens from here on out, Tom Brady decides to come back again and play again and wins another championship again. That won't affect how I look at Bill Belichick. He'll still go down as one of the greatest head coaches of all time, in my eyes. Hear that motorcycle? <laughs> He'll still go down as one of the greatest, and that'll never change. So, please like and subscribe. That is it. I am out. <laughs>